Today, we are going to be going over everything you ever need to know about Christina, the different techniques to use, different strategies, and everything you could possibly want to know. But if you guys get something out of this, please leave a like and subscribe. This took three weeks to make, and I would really appreciate the help in the algorithm. So one of the most important things is bouncing off of walls. Making sure that you're killing people while being in cover is one of the first things that you really need to get good at. If you ever see someone that is down where you can bounce something off the wall or even the floor onto them, but they can't see you, that is where you really want to be because that will make sure that you're putting out lots of damage in ways that can't really be responded to and it can make it to where you can be in super safe positions and hit people all across the map. Right here, instead of going up front and getting hit by that sniper, I throw out some traps and then I start bouncing the things off the walls. That way I can get the people without ever getting killed by that wall link. And right here, we're doing the same thing. Instead of chasing them and making it to where we're going to die, we're just bouncing it off the wall, and then we'll go in a little bit until we can see them, and then get them to chase us, and then we can lay traps behind us. If they don't fall into our sticky bomb traps, we can always just bounce it right off the wall into them, and that's the main thing you want to do. Keep yourself safe and use angles and the fact that you can bounce things off as many walls as you want until it hits them. And even you can get a little complicated with it and bounce it off things like the top of this raptor up here and bounce it onto the other side of the wall without anyone ever being able to get to you. You can also from here throw it into the middle room as well by going right under that bar. But by far the most important thing are sticky bombs. So right here we are going to get this guy low and then we do end up getting the kill but we're getting hit by an ult. So we're going to throw all three sticky bombs that way the guy can't come over to us without automatically dying. That is the best thing about these traps is once they hit it they are screwed and you can do a lot of really cool stuff. Right here, we were getting ulted, so what we did, we knew we were going to die no matter what. So we throw a sticky bomb over to where our teammate is before trying to run away. That way, we can help him get the kill and let him bait people into our trap, which is exactly what he did and how we got that kill there. Right here is my favorite thing to do. Putting the bombs on the other side of a wall where people can't shoot them out, you can end up screwing people over really hard with that. Another thing that's fun is doing the same thing and then baiting people in by acting like an idiot in a doorway and then running away. And you don't have to set up in a corner. You can do this on the fly, especially against aggro characters, by making them run behind something into your sticky bombs and then turning the tables on them. A really cool thing is once you get ulted, it's really hard to shoot more than once, but you can spam as many sticky bombs as you have available all at once. Right here, we do the same thing, and we hit their entire team with all those sticky bombs all at once, and it allows us to end up killing their whole team. Another cool thing about sticky bombs is it resets the cooldown on shooting your gun. And this is a full health victor that we kill in two seconds. And the reason for that is every time that you hit sticky bombs, it reshoots your gun. So you're hitting him twice every single time you shoot it. And in 2.2 seconds, we kill an entire victor. And this can happen repeatedly. Remember, as long as you are aiming and have auto fire on, when you hit sticky bomb, you also shoot them. And it resets the animation, which resets the cooldown on your shooting. So that's how you kill entire teams of people near instantly. So it is something cool right there. We end up killing a shell and a victor in 1.5 seconds from full. So it's one of the fastest ways to kill people in the entire game and the most damage you can possibly do.
I like to use the trap salt just because it ends up giving you a lot of free kills and you can run away right here. We do it in their spawn, separating their team and that allowed us to kill the JJ. And then we do have the guy behind us. We're going to shoot into the wall so it'll bounce back and forth till it hits him. And that's how we end up getting that kill right there. We do know there's only one way for him to come and we trap them with sticky balls into the wall. And now we already have our ult back up. And so we're going to go ahead, kill that guy, and then lay all the traps outside of their base. And it really helps against things like Johnny Jet, because if you hit them with it, it will trap them in place, and it'll show you exactly where they are, allowing you to get that kill. So the first type of playstyle is a cautious playstyle that's played more at long range. So this is more beneficial when you're not sure if you have a good teammate, and it allows you to kind of get a lay of the land and kind of anchor down back in the back and also on the other side of objective points to be able to basically just go ahead and do lots of damage from far away without ever getting shot. So in this playstyle, you don't want to rush forward. You want to make them come to you. And it helps on maps like this that only have a few different lanes that they can come through. And then you want to hit and run. You don't necessarily want to rush into them. You want to make them come to you, make them run over your traps. And whenever you have everyone dead, start blind firing down the different hallways they can come down. And that gives you a little bit of an indication of where they're coming from. Right here, now we know there's at least one on that right side. And I do want to keep paying attention to the other sides. But we do know at least where one is. And we ended up killing them from really far away. Which is one of the great benefits of this strategy, especially if you're in a situation where you die, your team kind of loses, which in 3.0 matchmaking is a lot of the situations. But once you know which side they're coming, you can start to throw your traps and also your sticky bombs, and that way you can limit where they can come from. Either they're going to be almost dead when they get to you, or they have to come from one direction. And that's what you really want. You want to funnel them in to all having to come down the same side. That makes it to where you can kill all of them by yourself with relative ease because you have a pretty big radius on the explosions. So if they all have to come up the center or all on the left, you can very easily funnel them down an area that you're shooting your bullets and kill all of them. And that's what we're doing here. See, even this guy, we're backing up. We're being cautious. We're making him run into us. We do end up dying, but we trapped everybody, so our teammates were able to cap the hill and win the game. But you can also play this up close and aggressive. And that's what this play style is. So right here, we are just making sure we're not getting hit from long range. And then we're going to try to push up. So right here, we're going to throw all of our sticky bombs up there and get them low. And then we're just trying to basically do our best to funnel them into one area. And try to get them to go in that left window because our teammates ruby shields were over there. So it just ends up being the best for us. Right here, we want to try to get away from the healer because you don't ever want to be up close to chemist. But as soon as we got him down, we do push back in. And that's why we're kind of playing over here and getting people to funnel into us. And then we're hitting him with our sticky bombs and aggressively shooting into them. This style does not work up close against chemist, though. You have to be very careful because he can heal himself if you're too close and kill you at the same time. So you want to kind of draw him out a little bit. And if you can trap him, that's usually the best. Right here, we do kill both his teammates while running away from him because we are still trying to get up close and aggressive. So you do still have to be careful with this play style against things like Chemist or like a Johnny Jet. You need to make sure that you're in the right positioning against those characters. But for their teammates, you can run right into them. You do so much damage as Christina between your shots and your sticky bombs. If you use all of them at once, you can kill every character in the game. Right there, we do kill both the guys. We hit the uh, chemist with a trap so our teammates can have an easier time of them. We go ahead and get them with the kill. And that's basically what we're doing is rotating back and forth between the right and the left 
just to make sure that we are up close and not taking long-range damage from things like Gloria and Hunter. And that's why this style works really well against these guys. You don't want to have to play them in a long-range match because your balls take so long to get to them that they're never going to hit them in the face. And you definitely want to hit them in the face with your balls. So what you're going to end up doing is do your very best to get up close to that Hunter and Gloria and kill them as fast as possible. Because when you're up close to them, it's a lot harder for them to hit you, and it's a lot easier for you to hit them. So a lot of the times, by rushing the hunter, as long as you get up close, he's going to have a lot more trouble than you are when it comes to getting that kill. So right here, we do go ahead and get the guy low, and luckily our teammate was able to finish him. And we just want to keep rotating, getting heals as much as possible, because when you're playing an up-close strategy, you need to have full health. Your whole thing is doing your very best to be able to live. We get that guy to get in close to us and then turn around on him. It ended up not working, though, because he did end up having the ult as a chemist. So that was unfortunate. But right here, we do rush into that hunter from behind, get him, and then we can go out and try to get that chemist up close. And now we just got to wait for the Gloria after getting the hill. And we're just throwing traps to make it to where people can't get to contest. And they do end up dying and giving us the win. So... Another thing you want to do is sometimes setting up and then being your team's anchor is the best thing you can do. So the way that you're going to do this is by going into something like a room or in this case where the large heel is up on the right and trying to help your team get kills. So at the very beginning on this map with Christina, I always like to try to throw some balls over in the very beginning and just try to get any damage I can, make the other team uncomfortable. And if you get a kill, great. If you don't, eh, that's fine too. But when you set up in this box, what you want to do is make sure that you have traps that are guarding one of the entrances. So if they come in, it'll tell you that you did damage. And not only that, they're going to be low, making it much easier to kill them in the first place. So that's exactly what we're doing. We're always going to make sure we have traps either on the wall right there, which is more risky because they can end up shooting them down. Or on where the ramp is, there's a little lip for the wall. You can hide it there. That way they can't shoot them down. But I want them to know the traps are there. Because if they do shoot them down, I will know they're coming. And I have all three back off cooldown already, so I can just spam them and kill them when they come in. It's just an early warning system. Or they run them over and then they die. But having them there makes them hesitate and just lets me have more free reign. And then if you end up getting caught out, you can always go and do the same thing from a corner. You don't have to be in an enclosed space. That's what we did. We put our back to that corner and they had to run into us, which allowed us to end up capping. And that is probably my favorite strategy is to put up traps, make them go exactly where you want or die doing it. And it ended up working out great. So... The next thing we're going to talk about is 5v5 and Christina. So Christina is interesting in 5v5 because if you have good teammates, Christina is a huge asset. If you don't have good teammates, Christina is terrible. And so the reason for this is Christina ends up doing pretty good damage, especially to shields and just getting people generally low. But it doesn't do very good in living and ending up getting kills itself from distance, which is the most important thing in this, because you're going to end up getting killed by a lot of Scotties and Osuses. But you can do what I did there and trap up top, getting the Osus to either back down or die. And so there are some benefits to it. And if you have good team, you can get everybody very low very quickly and allow them to get the kills. Allow a Yaw, a Scotty, or even an Osus yourself to be able to go ahead and get the kills on low players. And so it is very useful, even though a lot of players don't don't seem to think so. You're going to get less kills than if you play a Scotty or an Osus, and you really do need somebody there that can get those kills, but you want to make it as easy as possible for that Scotty to one-shot, and right here, what we're doing is trying to keep that Osus suppressed, and then also staying behind our fort 
and our Jabali shields. We do jump in forward there to make sure that we get in and kind of put pressure on everyone with our 5v5 ability to jump up. And that allowed us to get them to kind of push in towards me. And I immediately ran back behind the shields and they had already overcommitted away from their uh, like walls and other protections. So that's one cool thing that I realized on Christina and 5v5 is if you act like you overcommitted they are going to try to go get you. And if you do have teammates that are shielding, you can actually get out of that and really draw them into terrible situations, especially because the whole time you're going to want to lay traps and be shooting them, and that will end up allowing you to be able to have them low and in very, very bad spots with no cover. And so right here, we do end up using our ability to jump out behind this pillar to try to get behind everybody, and that ends up allowing our team to cap it and just distract a little bit long enough for them not to contest. Another cool thing about 5v5 and Christina is you being able to shoot into Osis's smoke and then just being able to trap bomb the side of a cart because that comes in such handy it's crazy and being able to shoot around angles and just be able to long range shoot at Osis in general is really nice. Right here I saw that they were having a guy try to come down the side so I do go down there but the chemist up close was going to kill me so I use my 5v5 jump ability backwards to be able to jump while continuing to shoot and it allowed us to get enough distance away from that chemist to be able to kill them and that's basically what you want to do you want to do a more hit and run style more of the cautious approach that i was talking about in 3v3 but then also make sure that you are getting those healers as easily as you can because you are going to be the best thing in the world for your team. Those healers cannot heal themselves. So if you can put damage out onto the healer, they either have to get away from everyone, and then that allows you and your team to kill all the damage players, or the healer just stands there and dies. I mean, Christina is one of the biggest things that hurts healers, because normally a healer can get behind a wall and be safe, but you can throw traps behind walls, you can throw your ult, and you also can bounce things off the wall. And you also have your 5v5 jump that allows you to get angles on people that are very unpredictable and just insanely hard for healers to deal with. So that's what makes you a really good asset on the team. When a lot of people think that Christina is very bad at 5v5, it is a very good team player. Similar to Iris, where Iris does very low damage, so you're not going to get that many kills. But with the 5v5 ability, and then if you have good teammates that are able to kill people, Iris is amazing. And so it's kind of the same thing. You're basically trying to do as much splash damage as possible on everyone, trying to corral people into where you want them to be, and then your team is just taking advantage of what you set them up with. But you got to play careful, you got to play cautious, because you're going to have every Scotty and every Osis all over you, because you are going to be destroying their team. Remember, even if you're not getting all the kills, you're the reason everyone's dying. Right there, we had a fort shield in front of us, so we used our 5v5 ability to jump in behind, keeping ourselves covered from the left, and then we're going to poke out here to see if the Osis is watching. If he is, we're going to have to be careful, and that's why we're we're just throwing a shoulder and then going back as soon as we saw the osis is watching i throw my ult into the osis smoke and then i'm gonna go around and try to just bother the osis we use our ability to jump in the air to get away from the osis and then i throw some traps on him and then we're able to actually kill the healer go back help kill the vincent and dominate the entire lobby going 11 0 with 11 assist most damage 7 0 with five assist most damage again because Christina's just insane. Almost as insane as Jordy's thumbnails. This guy is the easiest to work with with reasonable prices, and he just makes such great artwork. So instead of learning to be creative, I pay Jordy to be creative for me. And you can do it too. Go to my description, get his Discord information, and set up a deal for yourself. Alright guys, thanks for watching, and have a great day.